What's up everyone? We're gonna be talking about how to deal with jealousy and envy and maybe some frustration too. So I wanna start with a bit of a story. Uh, not long ago, I was jealous and envious of some other YouTubers. And I went on a YouTube and I looked up these channels and one of them was Leafy is here. Another one was uh, Drama Alert and there's a lot of channels like this scarce and these channels had millions of subscribers millions of views and they're uploading these daily videos and clearly making tons of money and here i was i had put up 700 videos on this channel hundreds more on other youtube channels and we're still you know barely getting 10 to 20 views and I was frustrated because on top of that, these specific channels were really spreading a lot of negativity. Almost every one of their videos was pretty much making fun of, uh, tearing apart, or spreading pretty much a lot of negativity or hatred on a new person. They would literally either pick a new YouTuber or a new person they found on the internet and tear them apart and that was just mind-blowing to me because it was very very clear from all my study of uh, successful people that positivity wins out positivity is what all the most successful wealthiest people do and it seemed like that's how you would make so much money and I was just literally shocked I, I was frustrated because I had not even thought that this was even, I, I didn't understand it because these people were, they were being so negative and yet they were in essence succeeding in a way. So it didn't make sense. And I, I was frustrated because I thought that this shouldn't occur. This should not occur. And so here I was in this spot how do you solve this how do you get out of jealousy envy and all of this other stuff and how do you how do you reconcile that uh, so here's my thoughts uh, let's just start with the whole negativity positivity thing so first and foremost uh, just to give you a bit of background and context I read a lot of success and wealth creation books studied and watched thousands of successful people in interviews and videos and so forth and some of the wealthiest people in the world and they are very positive positive. and I mean you can list them off the top of your head anyone you can think of they're generally positive people and they spread positivity and then you have Napoleon Hill who wrote Think and Grow Rich and many other books that sold millions of copies and he literally spent his life over 30 years following around in person the wealthiest 500 people in the world these were billionaires people like andrew carnegie henry ford and uh, he did this uh, over 70 years ago but the point is one of his key findings which you needed a positive mental attitude so when i found these people that were like all negative and stuff it made me negative because i was thinking how's that doesn't make sense. He, they're not following the rules. They're making other people's day worse. And and yet they're, they're succeeding. So um, the first thing I, I would suggest, this is what I did at least, was I turned it around. As a positive person, um, I can't be negative and grow more negatively because of someone else. So instead I thought, you know what? I always applaud someone else's success. It's great for them and what they've achieved. I may not agree with some of the stuff they're doing, but it's awesome that they have achieved their level of success. And maybe some of that negativity will come back to bite them one day, maybe not. And arguably you could say it somewhat has because you know some of these people are dealing with a lot of uh, you know, negative feedback from their viewers uh, and some aren't and others are just dealing with their own internal issues despite the outward success so regardless of what's happening whether that's happening or not I'm happy for them I'm 
um, happy that other people can achieve success in this world, which is clearly getting more prosperous, which is always a good thing for more and more people to be successful. So I turned around and I looked at it in a positive light. And I said, you know what? If they can do it, that's just more encouragement for me to do, uh, to, to learn what they're doing better and try and, you know, figure out how they're doing it. Oh, they're titling their videos like this. They use these types of titles. They have all caps in their titles. Hmm, that's how their thumbnails titled. Hmm, maybe I should do it that way. So I took it as a learning experience rather than just something that's not constructive. And that's how successful people do it. They look at it and rather than complain and do nothing or, or, or go backwards, they go forwards and grow from it. And then the second thing is I realized, you know what? It may not be all bad. And I realized that millions of people were watching these videos because they were entertained. They were getting some type of value from it. So although it was negative, there was some level of value being generated. People were watching this day after day because they were entertained by this by these videos. So they were getting free value in the form of entertainment. So I realized it wasn't all bad and I started piecing together and learning what they had and why they were succeeding. Now, let's get to the core of the problem, jealousy and envy. How did I tackle this? Well, the best piece of advice I ever got was from Warren Buffett. He's talked a lot about jealousy and envy and his partner, his business partner, Charlie Munger, has talked a ton about it too. And uh, Charlie even said it better actually. Charlie said, uh, envy is the one sin that isn't fun when you're doing it. Almost every other sin you do, you're enjoying yourself. Gluttony, you, you get to eat, you know, uh, lust, you get to enjoy uh, or appreciate women. Envy, you're just pissed off all the time. It's not even fun. So why even do it? Don't bring yourself down when you're in control of that and you know how short life is. So why waste your time making your life worse when it doesn't have to be? Second thing is, you know, sometimes you have to cut it off. Some of it is not fully under your control. Who's gonna do better? The guy who doesn't have to deal with any type of temptations or the guy who has to every day walk through life and there's all sorts of temptations around him whether it's women or something else that he has to deal with that influences his, beha his behavior. So sometimes changing your environment so you're not constantly influenced by these comparisons will really affect your mood and your happiness. And this goes into psychology and the, pro the, the concept of social comparison and dwelling and staying in bad moods. So realize this and create systems so you're not constantly exposed to this without realizing it and realize un, not being unaware of how it's affecting you. A great example, get a social media blocker. And most YouTubers will not tell you this because they want you to watch their YouTube videos because I want your best interests in mind. You know, if it means not comparing yourself to other people as much, get yourself a YouTube blocker. And those are free. There's plenty of free Chrome and other browser extensions that have these blockers available that will block the site even if you try and type it in. So that's another way of getting ahead. And uh, I think the last big thing uh, that he said that really made an impact was, um, you know, it's really stupid to be jealous of someone who won the lottery. That's the most random thing out of your control. It's a one in a million thing and it's so out of your control. And the way he said it, I'm paraphrasing here, uh, it really, on its own point blank, it might have not been convincing, but since I had studied so much of his biography and I knew how he thought and how Munger thought, I knew the, the basic implicit message behind it. Uh, you're really just hurting yourself uh, by comparing yourself to something that's out of your control, luck and that does you no good. Rather, um, I realize that there's so much I can be fortunate about. So I always count my blessings, all the things that I've overlooked in the past uh, that I should be grateful for. And I realize I could be, a, just, uh, I, I've looked at the science of it and I've realized I can be as happy as possible now with all that 
without all that material stuff. And uh, if you look at the science and how it correlates between money and happiness, uh, you'll realize that uh, it peaks and then um, the increase is very little after you hit a median average, slightly above median average uh, first world income, which isn't a lot. It's not millions of dollars. It's not even six figures. So when you realize that, you realize, oh, once those basic needs are met, uh, this money thing, it doesn't have as much of an impact on your happiness as you think. So then why are you so angry or envious of people who have more money if it doesn't even provide the happiness? Why do you want more money? And so that's just another thing that you want to keep in mind and keep in perspective. And putting that all together, it just makes sense. I'm not, I, once I realize that, I'm not envious of something that's out of my control, like someone winning the lottery. Uh, instead, I always try and make my own luck and improve my own odds. And so that means finding something I can control that can make me even more money than that guy who won the lottery, whether it's starting my own business or writing a book or something else along those lines. And then the final piece of advice I can give you to control envy and jealousy and you know, diminish them from your life is to really, really make an effort to really understand how uh, much you have and, and really express out loud how grateful you are for all this stuff. And there's a lot of books on this. Uh, there's a ch final chapter in Tony Robbins' book, Money Master the Game, which is great for this. But to explain it in one sentence, the richest person in the world, this a billionaire who lived 50 years ago, most of the stuff he could afford was, is still lower quality than what most people alive now who live a middle income lifestyle have. I mean, we have better transportation. We can fly around the world. We have access to movies that cost hundreds of millions of dollars. We can talk to our friends on the other side of the world through Skype or FaceTime or whatever else easily. We could broadcast ourselves to the world instantly. We can do this, that, and the list goes on. Indoor plumbing, air conditioning, uh, the efficiency and speed of cars, the affordability, all these things we have, but we take for granted education, the opportunities, equal rights. And some of the richest people, billionaires, from just 50 years ago, they didn't have access to any of this, uh, to the quality we had, no matter how much they were willing to spend. They could have spent billions and they couldn't have done it. So keep that in mind. And once you realize that, you really start seeing how much we take for granted and how much happiness um, is not as correlated to our quality of living as we think. Thanks for watching. Hopefully it helped. Please share this video with someone who needs it. Thanks for watching. See you later.